Hey you all, I am in Washington DC and in this video I'm going to be going into the East Building of the National Gallery of Art. This is the uh, Modern and Contemporary Art Exhibit as well as the Sculpture Garden. Let's go. So this building was designed by I.M. Pei. It's a very well-known modern architect. I really like his work. Like most I.M. Pei buildings, he uses a lot of triangles and the glass pyramids like he did the ones at the Louvre. The building opened in 1978 and it houses the modern and contemporary art. And the architecture here in the atrium is amazing, with a giant 1976 Calder Mobile. This is a Capricorn by Max Ernst. There's a Noguchi and Canvases of Color by Ellsworth Kelly. Works by Pierre Bernard, a post-impressionist. And Edouard Villard of the Nabis movement. A room of Armidio Modigliani's, mainly his very unusually shaped women paintings, sometimes naked. A 1918 silhouette by Pablo Picasso. This was when Cubism was very popular in the 19-teens and 20s. George Brock is also one of the most famed Cubists. Brock was also a Fauvist who used non-natural color with vivid expression. Picasso's 1923 The Lovers. This is when he moved from Cubism to Neoclassicism. Madame Picasso, 1923. And Picasso's Classical Head from 1922. Brock's 1952 The Garden Table. Raoul Dufy's Regatta at Cows from 1934. He's another famed Fauvist. There's a whole room of Henri Matisse works. These range across his career from 1905 to 1944. Most consider him the leading Fauvist early on. Then he developed a very emphasized, flattened style. As the years went on, his works got a little more simple and he tried to follow more French classical ways. Uh, of course, using his own unique style with that. One of George Bellow's famed boxing and wrestling scenes. This one is from 1909. This is a Bellows painting of booming Manhattan in 1911. Cape Cod Evening by Edward Hopper, a favorite artist of mine. Groundswell from 1939 is one of my favorites by him. He enjoys sailing and the sea, but like most of his works, it still invokes a sense of loneliness and isolation. Works by Georgia O'Keeffe, also a favorite of mine. These are called Jack in the Pulpit from 1930. Stuart Davis's Multiple Views. His works are usually very complicated. Mount Cowden, Maine by Marsden Hartley. That's where the Appalachian Trail starts. A Jean de Buffet, he certainly got his own unique style. These are both from 1901, on the left by Picasso, and next to it, a Matisse. Picasso's 1905 family of the Salton Banks, depicting lost circus performers. A corner of the Moulin de la Galette by Toulouse-Lautrec. The Tragedy by Picasso in 1903, clearly part of his blue period when he was super depressed. And post-blue period works by Picasso, Picasso's 1909 Head of a Woman. He and Matisse both knew how to sculpt, too. Nineteen eighteen Guitar Player by Jacques Lipchitz. 
This is one of the paintings I was looking for, and I guess I walked right by it. And this is The Farm by Yao Miro, and this painting was owned by Ernest Hemingway. And there is some late impressionism in here, too. This is A Still Life by Paul Cezanne. This is The Olive Orchard by Vincent Van Gogh. He did this in 1889 at the asylum at St. Remy of some nearby olive trees. He painted these olive trees near the asylum numerous times. Pre-Cubism, Georges Braque paintings. This is German Expressionism, not as well known as other forms developing at the time, but these do show the tension of many Germans in the early 20th century, especially after World War I. In the 1960s and 70s, minimalism became very popular, and these are obviously very minimalist works. These are Cubes on the Floor by Robert Morris, Equal Quantities by Barry Leva in 1967. This was pretty neat, called Hanging Islands by Charles Ross. The giant Calder mobile in the atrium just makes this place perfect. Now this will mostly be art from 1945 to the present. A work by Frank Stella. This is by Roy Lichtenstein. That includes the Statue of Liberty. I lucked out here. I happened to be at this room right before they closed it. They only open it for like 20 minutes total a day. These are all Matisse paper cutouts. When Matisse was getting more ill towards the end of his life, he moved to making cutouts because it was less difficult for him to do. This is the best collection I have seen of them, including scenes from jazz. Here's a Green Maryland by the king of pop art, Andy Warhol, one of many, many versions he did of Marilyn Monroe. Glenn Lagun's I Am A Man, which he based off the protest signs of the 1960s civil rights movement. The brown bus are made from chocolate, and the white ones are made from soap. Synecdoche is 400 panels of people's skin colors. It worked by photorealist Chuck Close, which means he paints photos to make them abstract. A self-portrait by Andy Warhol. This is a classic example of his work, which includes four different photos, which are filtered and seem to show motion. And this is by Jackson Pollock. Some people love his work, a lot of people don't understand it. This is an example of his abstract expressionism. This is number one from 1950, and this is one of his most famous works. It exemplifies his unique style of mostly random paint drippings on a giant canvas. They also have a lot of sketches and some of his earlier works from the 30s and 40s. Another Warhol. This is A Boy from Egg from 1962. This is another work he did based on photographs put on silk screen. A work by Roy Lichtenstein. He often parodied real things in a comic style, like this one of Mickey Mouse and Donald Dunk from 1961. Here's some Giacometti figures and Rothko paintings in the background. And this is down at the concourse underground level. Where you can see a waterfall from inside the building. This tunnel connects the two buildings of the National Gallery, and it's actually the largest and most complex light sculpture in the world by Leo Villarreal. It is very fun to go through 200 feet of LED performances. I'm now in the sculpture garden of the National Gallery. This has a lot of contemporary art uh, for outdoors. Here's some weird thing by David Smith and has the National Archives in the background. This is an Alexander Calder 
called Cheval Rouge. I always like seeing Calder sculptures. You can see his uh, signature right there. I really like this one. This is one of Roy Lichtenstein's houses. It looks like a 3D sculpture. You can look at it from certain angles. I didn't know that about these house sculptures they did. They're really cool. There's a giant silver tree. There's a metropolitan metro sign, like the ones, the Art Nouveau ones that you have in Paris. The guy who made this, Barry Flanagan, makes all of these like rabbits. He really likes doing rabbits like this. Never seen one of his works in real life, I don't think, so this is cool. This is a four-sided pyramid by Saul LeWitt. It's really cool. They have a giant fountain pool with the National Archives in the background. This one's a bit eerie, it's a bunch of headless girls. And this is by Robert Indiana, a fellow Hoosier. It says Amour, which means love in French. This should probably be in Paris. And uh, he passed away a few months ago. There's a giant spider. And this is one of the world's largest typewriter erasers. I don't know why this exists. All right, so that's the National Gallery of Art East Building. Definitely one of the best art museums I've ever been to. Uh, go check out the West Building if you didn't see that video. That one's honestly even better. Um, but anyways, if you like art museums, please check out my other videos and all my other DC videos while you're doing that. And thanks for watching.